Hello and welcome, my friends, to Eurovision.blog. My name is Georg Lanzinger, and today I have a fantastic guest. He is LinkedIn, top brand management voice. He helps companies and people to position their brand on top of LinkedIn. His name is Adnan, and I'm happy that you are here, Adnan. Thanks a lot, and please introduce yourself. Thank you very much, George, for giving me this opportunity to contribute on this platform. And uh, good morning, everyone. And for those who are in different time zone, maybe like good evening and maybe afternoon. So, well, I myself, Adnan Asen, I'm basically branding and marketing cheerleader. Uh, it's been more than like 12 to 14 years almost I'm working this industry. And my primarily I'm working three main domains, branding, marketing and content. And it's been like almost two years I have leveraged this domain of branding, marketing and content strategy in align with the pro advanced tool like generative AI. Why I opt for this thing that will I share in the later part of this discussion, but what I believe that once you adapt yourself with the latest technology that will make you capable to become future ready through upscaling yourself. I work with well reputable brands like packages, packages, mall, defense, Traya, Fortress square. I work with subway. I am currently working with systems limited at employee branding lead as well. And I work with many international different brands. Recently, I've done my consultancy for school insurance. It's a 47 years old insurance company in Dubai. Apart from that, I work with the celebrities like Kamalia Zahur. She is a former Miss World under the platform of Numan Rauf production. And uh, along with that, by the way, Numan Rauf is like my very brotherly to me. He has done international so many projects. It was a great success. And within like a month, we crossed 2 million views through the pre-launch marketing of that song. Apart from that, I worked okay. with The Pretty Girl, the same song by uh, Kamalia. She done that project in Pakistan. We helped to get all types of production in terms of creative, indoor, outdoor, and the video shoots, promos, show reels, event brand launch, uh, like complete event launch within uh, Pakistan we have done. It was a great success, in fact. And we are looking forward to so many products in the future with her. I've worked with Rahat Patili Khan. I have worked with other celebrities like Sadeli Bagga. I have some partial contribution to some of the international brands that I can't share the name because I was like the invisible creative partner for them. But that's the overall journey. And on the other side, you're not also working with individuals. As brands, you're also working with a bank. You mentioned a bank from Dubai, you were working with them. Are there big differences when you're working with a personal brand or with a company brand? Yeah, that's really interesting. See, whenever I share my introduction, sometimes I find myself like hard to explain how much, how many things I actually do. My personality is very versatile. Likewise, my portfolio is very versatile. Starting from the personal branding, I have actually coached and mentored 4,000 plus individuals. That includes many C-suite executives. That's on the personal branding side. Like on the, the professional side, for the corporate brands, I've shared the name with you. That includes the tech companies. That includes lifestyle brands. That includes the food, uh, fast food manufacturing brands. That includes like shopping malls. So there is a cross-industrial experience that I have with by, while working for different brands. That was in either working with um, with my formal company, Brandship, UK based advertising company. And along with that, I was working as a creative consultant, creative director, head of creative for different brands. And that was like overall my experience. I am visiting faculty member. I, I taught at the University of the Punjab. There I am basically, I have also studied there at Institute of Administrative Sciences, University of the Punjab. And along with that, I, later on, I worked as a faculty member. Then I moved to LAMS. This is one of the top-notch educational institutions in Pakistan. There I have worked, plus I have upskilled myself with postgraduate certifications. And later, at the later stages, I acquired almost 51 plus certifications in different areas to upskill myself because I believe learning is a continuous journey. And in today's dynamic environment, I feel myself, I, even after a week, I feel myself outdated. This is my vibe to myself on and off. So I keep myself updated 
on and off and that's how I work. Our time is now a lot of changes yeah. are here and uh, it is very important for a lifelong learning. We have to learn a lot always. If you look into the future of brand management with the rise of new technologies like AR, how can brands leverage them to create unique and immersive brands experiences? Um, well, Judge, see, getting, uh, for like every struggling brand, I'm talking, I will talk about struggling brand, those who are in the merging phase, those who have already developed themselves, we can come quickly come up with five to six main parameters they have worked on. What were the winning factors for them? The first, they were tech pro, tech savvy, they keep themselves updated with the technology. They keep an eye on the consumer changing trends. That was very important. Consumer has a different interest, different mood with the passage of time. And they keep an eye on that and they adapt themselves accordingly. They adapt their strategies accordingly. The third was they, be, they build their culture. They believe in their people. They invest in their people. And I, because it's the people that form the strength of any organization. And this people-centric approach actually becomes the oxygen for any organization or brand to grow. So I divide, define this whole the ecosystem in a way that your employees are like your internal customers. They need equal level of respect and equal level of attention. Likewise, you do for external customers, those who are like your real-time commercial profitable uh, side. So keep the, striking a balance between both sides will help the company in a way like when you actually treating your internal employees with on the same note, you want your external employees, your internal employees will take care of things in the same momentum, you give them experience for your external customers. This is a two-way journey. And I think this world need, works on give and take. And when we actually practice the spirit of give and take on a very like equity note, helping each other, building a community of knowledge sharing, appreciating each other and sharing kindness and goodness, and that will actually trickle down. And this actually comes from the top leadership. So. What you have asked me when we say brand management, the brand management thought leadership eventually required the same mantra, like the leadership of branding, brand decision makers in any organization need to adapt with three to four winning factors. The tech part, the culture part, what you call the latest trends they are looking for, innovation they needed in product. I have one equation I used to share in brand management at different coaching sessions, that if you have a strong pro product, and you have a, what you call strong marketing, you will have a effective brand management. If you have a weak product, but, and if you have a strong marketing, you will have one time good brand management experience, but you will lose in the long run. If you have the weak, what you call, what you call a, a marketing strategy, the weak product, and eventually the weak culture, you will have the failure. So in the brand management, to maintain this umbrella, in a way that provides shed or shade to everyone, thought leadership or the leadership of a brand decision makers or the organization need to make sure that they strike a balance on both sides by keeping themselves aligned with the winning factors as well. So it's like the you are setting the magnet inside out. The inside magnet once strengthened, the inside magnet is actually your employees, your team, your intern, those who are well trained, well equipped. When this magnet has the frequency outside the world, this will attract the external customer. And that's how things work. Very good introduction to it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Adnan. Thank you. And so you were talking about the future of branding and to make the focus more on strategy. Yeah. And in the background, your poster says AI powered brand yeah. growth. What does it mean? Yeah. AI powered brand growth. Thank you, George, for asking this question. I'm uh, like in the closing phase of launching my product of AI powered brand growth system. I have developed a system based on my years of experience. I will share this as what you call my intellectual product that will help any organization to work on standard benchmarks. That and this whole growth system has different components that covers what you call the brand strategy the marketing strategy, the content strategy in a line with AI framework, in a line with ethical considerations. Because when you work with AI technology in isolation, 
you have context less branding and marketing when you framework your ai effort in a line with real brand realities challenges of your company and you instruct your ai platform you framework your ai platform according to your brand contextual challenges your brand contextual problems pain points and other futuristic approaches you will come up with contextful meaningful organization growth brand growth strategy so this ai powered whole growth system includes different components that will actually help you to build what you call your brand system the brand success system so that will be launched as a complete product that will include different prompts that will include different strategy templates that will include the pitch deck template that will include the guidelines that will include different template voice videos how even that includes different uh, brand philosophy videos how you have to pitch yourself as an introductory brand how you need to shoot your brand so if i talk about uh, 10 to 15 major components of this brand a powered growth system that will include ai aligned framework to build the brand strategy marketing strategy design strategy content strategy that will also cover the imagery selection your what you call the shoot selection pre production post production of brand portfolio development that will also include how you define your color strategy so it's technically the whole umbrella the one i talk about the brand management this brand management will cover will be covered in this ai powered growth management system so this will be launched soon in like one or two months tentatively but i will officially announce this whole product on linkedin and on my website my website is going to be launched in like next one month it's adnanhsenofficial.com it's 80% done i am working on certain testing phases and this will be launched as well so this product will be available on that platform and by virtue of this discussion and today's meeting i am giving what you call a pro offer to all the viewers to all the stakeholders who are even attached with george and george himself that i will give a flat 50% wave off to all the participants and those who uh, they all they need to come up with the promo code of george brand success <laughs> and that's how i will launch this oh and then that's really great thanks a lot for this offer we will keep the people posted when you launch your website we will mention it here and also the link to your website we will mention it here down and also the link to your linkedin page that the people know how to contact you, you. if they need thank help you. thank you and yeah you're welcome so you're doing really a great job and you are linkedin top brand management voice and that's for a good reason you know it inside out what to do to make a brand big but using ai isn't this dangerous when you're using ai do you still have to do anything yourself when you use ai yeah very interesting question thank you very much jod in my previous different meetings same question come up in different forms and i really love this question reason i ask i want people to ask me this question the importance of this question is based on the reason jod people need to understand that ai is your assistant ai is your second brain ai is a mechanistic brain first success of any brand comes with the emotional bonds and emotional bonds come up with the stories and real human experiences are only drived by real humans so if i myself as a brand management professional has to come up with a define any campaign for abc brand or xyz brand first i need to define or pen down all the pain point challenges and the emotional factors that will help my target audience to get bond with my brand or business so that will come up with but first come with raw words at first stage at the second stage i will draft those raw words in different line listical points at the third stage i will convert them into instructions and once i develop them in the instructions it's like the same journey if we think for a moment when genai was not actually applicable in this world or not popular in this world what we do normally 
we actually explore internet. Before that, we write down the points. What are the customer journey points in terms of psychographic, sociographic, geographic? What are the challenges they are facing? What are their interests? What they looking for? What they have feared? And then we gain draft manually all the documents. That was the journey. Now we have one tool that help you to articulate, to structure, to streamline your strategy effort, to polish your thinking, but only and only when you first share the humane thought, humane instructions, your framework, your real-time insights to the tool, and then that platform can give you a more structured answer. Like the same way when I say, if I give a prompt to like chat GPT, let's say, I, I say, I simply say, give me a branding strategy for Coca-Cola. Let's say. And that strategy will be random. He will, chat GPT will pick and choose different points from different sites and give me a random strategy. Versus when I ask, give, act as a world top marketing director. Your role is to define summer campaign for coca-cola in pakistan we have sociographic demographic geographical following pain point following interest points of the target audience following mood board following social statuses so after this i ask them to share all the components in a proposal form give them give me a structured answer heading by heading i will keep experimenting with you Till I read my final satisfied answer. So the more I dive deep, the more I dig down further on the chat GPT with the real-time instructions, real-time insights, real-time points that will actually help even that tool to come up with a purpose-driven and meaningful answer that we are actually desiring for. So what I was trying to tell is the thing that chat GPT will not work in isolation. You need to set a periphery or boundary to ch chat GPT itself. Like your child, you don't allow your child to go anywhere, even like outside in the society, because you know, once you let her to free at the age when it's not trained, he might be facing any risk. He might be losing any integrity. I'd be facing any something very dangerous. Likewise, when we talk about this tool, it's like your baby tool, you first need to train it. When you train it, you, you need to come up with the framework. When you talk about the framework, you actually need to come up with the instruction. When we say instruction, you need to come up with the prompt. And when we say prompt, you need to structure all the information, all the points. And that will again first require the manual working, the drafting of your point. Once you are satisfied with your draft, then you put that draft in the AI tool then it will come up with the real answer insights you're looking for. And that's how the AI tool will minimizing the risk because the tool itself is an emerging phase. The guru, the giants who are working on this AI tool, like the OpenAI, Google, and other platform, Microsoft, they are polishing, they are restructuring in every second hour to make it more like meaningful for the organization. What we need to aware the people is the fact how to use it because the more meaningful you are, the more better you train it, the more desired answer you will get. Stay a little bit with uh, AI now. That's very interesting, Adnan, what you're telling here, our guests, and it's fantastic. So prompting, a good prompting is very, very important. But to make a good prompting, you need knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I think it is a good advice for the younger viewers that they are still learning a lot because without knowledge, you can't do a good prompting. Exactly. Do you think in the future, AI will also make a pretest of our prompting and with the output, what it is given exactly. that the people don't have to learn anymore? Exactly, exactly. There are so many tools even currently available that uh, help you to generate prompts. Though every tool has a certain limit, but there is a framework like we can have a future dedicated session on the prompt only where i can share the demos how you can use the prompts in terms of devising or frameworking your strategy there are different tools online available to, that will help you to as a prompt generator but i have tested many tools what i have concluded about these tools the actual mantra the actual strength is your own self 
you have to work experiment through your own self by drafting manually different documents until and unless i think within like one or two months there are two to three tools that i will share like in my takeaway of this session or even in the coming session that are like i top rated them like six out of ten they are working fine but i believe along with that if you club your manual effort then you will come up with more structure and polish prompt and that will help any layman to come up with a fine prompting strategy interestingly george when we say uh, the prompt what actually the rocket science behind prompt is i simplify it in a very fine way it's the same thinking process we have when we don't have this technology like like let's say when we when you have to do any campaign what we do normally we first work on like let's work on the brand voice let's work on what was what is the brand guideline of this particular business or organization what are the strategies they have used what are the customer target audience what they are what are the pain points like the all conventional things we normally do when do we don't have this generative ai technology we have a documented template even like i have shared in my uh, ai powered go system the template universally applicable and when you say universally applicable that comes under brand convergence brand convergence principles are worldwide applicable like if we talk about unilever nestle procter and gamble racket bank easier or any worldwide brand there are certain things very converging in terms of like standards when you say brand voice yes every brand practice voice when we say brand mantra every brand has a brand mantra tagline every brand target audience every brand has a target audience so the basic outline structure is being practiced by each and every brand so once we outline our effort according to that structure brand plan and then converting it in a way of instruction like i say i i develop a, a whole structure of a branding plan and then i ask chat gpt act as a creative director or branding director for abc brand i am giving you instruction of this abc brand abc 1 2 3 up to 10 point now in the light of these points analyze and come up with the answer for the following point and i think that will help chat gpt to but again that will not the ultimate answer you need to what you call experiment on and off until and till unless you come until the point you come up with a fine tune answer and that's actually how any successful brand prompting will work So you do a good prompting and AI is your second brain as you mentioned that's that's a very good saying to use AI for help and not to make AI the main brain yeah, yeah. you make a very good prompting you get the answer from any AI then you're coming back with a good solution to your client the client says no i don't like it yeah that's not good so what are you doing when this happens yeah, yeah. very interesting question see if if for a moment if we think gen ai is not in this world let's think about our journey of as a branding professional only when we were manually working on brand strategy and everything even at that time we faced these challenges we come up with a proposal we come up with a campaign plan we share with the client and he or she said yeah that that's not really interesting that's not something really awesome come up with a better plan likewise when we use gen ai we are not saying ke 100% at the very first stance we will can understand we may convince and we may not it all depends upon how type b you go through that tool all about how much can we ignore the argument the rationality you build in line with the customer pain point in line with the top management expectation but in the worst case if it so happen yes you need to rework on your strategy and again you can come with the new thought process new thinking new insights again first framing your own human mind then using your second brain so that it become your second thought and your first thought and second thought and coming up with the final thought by using those the mix. and even you will have a team definitely you are sharing with your team 
you're sharing insights with the uh, team and they're sh- giving you feedback. So it's like the fusion of both technology and the human effort. So you need to keep experiment. And uh, yes, we can say the success factor will be increased. For certain brands, it may increase 5x. For certain, it may be 10x. For certain, maybe 1x. And for exceptional, it may be 100x. It all depends the complexity of the product, the industry we are working, and the brand we are working, and the expectation of the management. And most, and, and, and I believe all over the world, one thing is very converging. Worldwide, the audience that is getting dominated is Gen Z, the millennial gen. So millennial gen is tech season. They are putting so much sentiments. Even I, I, I would like to share one example by sharing what, one of my slides. That sentiment analysis tools are very much common. Even Coke uses, Pepsi uses. And what they do on different social media platforms, when you put your sentiment, they have a different sentiment analysis tool that develop a cluster tree of those tools, uh, those sentiments, and then grab the best one and then aligning those sentiments as an interest or pain point for the brand and then coming up with a new narrative, new brand campaign that eventually had the customer, wow, that's something I was looking for. So again, how interestingly, how intelligently you use this tool with the humane interaction, humane thought process alignment that will actually bring a success. In isolation of if you use only only this tool, this wouldn't work. Absolutely. And the Gen Z is very, very interesting at how they, how they consume content, how to attract them. That's, that's very interesting. And so, so you can see how companies are using AI to enhance consumer experience and engagement. There are like four main components I've experienced so far in my own professional journey. The one is like seamless omni-channel experience means, as you can see, that all the campaigns are now integrated, like IMC, Integrated Marketing Communication Practices, where once you develop the campaign, you have tools that will help you to launch your campaign in one go, either on, like on your stores, on your mobile campaign, the Google AdWords, the social media channels, and all these things. Their AI is helping you like either to like, if you had write the product description on the spot, there are AI tools available. You can plug in and you can add any particular or uh, what you call description of the job. Right? Likewise, if we have to write sentiments about uh, what you call uh, reply to your customers and get a cluster of any response, there are AI tools are also available that are helping organizations to develop a cluster of good sentiment analysis even the critical uh, sentiment that help organizations to grow as well. Likewise, immersive AI experiences w- through virtual reality and augmented reality, organizations are providing customer experiences. Like for any product demo, you don't need actually to share long videos. You can welcome any uh, client at your what you call experience center, the national brand, who are actually working in terms of uh, using virtual reality to give a complete product demo. That's also very interesting nowadays. Likewise, emotion AI. AI is used to transcend mere text and voice recognition with a future holding promise of it. This can help to respond to human emotions, express via official tone of voice, tools according to the brand voice, brand personality, and even your target audience response. These tools will reply to actually address the need of your customer in a real-time way. So, emotion AI is, according to my experience, is something really curious to me, really interesting part for me, and I'm looking for these tools, the pro advanced tools in the near future, that will be get most popular in a way because they are more close towards human interaction. They can be even in, t- in terms of like uh, sales support. These tools can even work on uh, uh, what you call social media response management or comment management. Likewise, for AI part CRM, uh, like customer relationship management, you can have that can help you to identify or extract the data based on your target audience, how many leads you have acquired, how many 
potential customers are there in the pipeline you need to contact and how many need to follow up. So it's a complete integrated management where AI tool will help you in a way like if you have to see how many leads you have to uh, have acquired, you can just type a prompt and give, give an inspection. Even you can get a suggestion how I can improve my leads. These are some case studies like talk about Spotify. If you remember, we all use Spotify for like enjoying the songs. A feature is there in the Spotify where you can actually Spotify has allow user to create personalized playlists based on description alone. With this feature, it demonstrates Spotify interest in using AI for music production. Actually, this will help any user to develop a cluster. For example, if I like, if I want to hear for the next one month songs of Taylor Swift, I can just put type the instructions that I want the uh, Taylor Swift collection uh, for the month of June and AI play play list will automatically save complete list of Taylor Swift songs for the month of June and giving you alert regularly and that's how the user journey are becoming more friendly for any brand like if we talk about the Amazon Amazon has uh, defined a feature called predictive analysis that help you to create highly targeted and personalized campaigns that resonate with your audience. This is the case of Systems Limited where we have to launch a campaign. The objective of the campaign was to enroll 200 candidates for this program. This is basically a program by Systems Limited where they train fresh graduates, both like CS graduates, computer science graduates and non-science, non-CS graduates by upskilling them in the field in different domains of IT like it may be like .NET, it may be like uh, ERP solution, it may be like Node.js and other technologies. So my role was uh, through my team was to ensure to come up with a campaign idea where we first launch a teaser video and that teaser video will actually persuade the target audience means the fresh graduates who are interested to join this program. Along with that, we were planning a carousel, carousel ad with a couple of ads explaining each program. So how I align AI efforts here, let me share that. In this case, we, we were short of time and we, we were supposed to come up with smart solution, intelligent solution that create meaningful experience for the target audience. So as you can see at the bottom part, there's like the tagline going on along with the voiceover. So what we do, this was the song basically uh, sung by Tizad Roy, that is a famous singer. He is a famous singer in Pakistan. What we did, we select some chunks from that song. That song was also for the same program, basically launched two years back. We used this footage and developed a narrative for the New Year campaign. We first developed the script and according to the script, I visualize what will be the landscape of the video. So according to that a landscape, I selected the chunk. So I framework my whole effort through Generative AI. So he suggests me what you call meaningful plan. And I tweak that plan like up to 20% and make it more concrete. And then I develop the visual landscape and I selected the chunks of those, that song and align it with my script. Plus, I cherry top it with the AI voiceover and that makes the whole product of this video really interesting. It's like 30 to 40 second message, we convey the whole uh, concept that we are launching the new batch. On the social media, we get huge response, overwhelming response. Are you tired of constantly battling to stay ahead in an ever-changing job market? Don't worry, time to transform your career. Get yourself ready to supercharge your skill set by joining the Pakistan largest gateway to reskill and upskill and future proof your career in IT. Stay tuned. We are launching soon. This is like the carousel I'm sharing. It's called Jot, what you call carousel ads. In carousel ads, what we do basically be we chop down a whole campaign in different segments. The first slide or first ad is the title of that campaign and last slide is the call to action and in between we sandwich the ad campaign concept with different value proposition, different programs we are offering, different prospects 
this program will actually bring for the participant and that's how this whole campaign was designed. This is like title slide. We first come up with a questioning note. Are you ready to supercharge your career? And again, in this whole concept, I framework my instructions to the Gen AI model that please help me to devise punchlines. And I give him, I even give him the clue what type of, what you call the punchlines I'm looking for. I give reference examples even in that. And, and this is what the best, best version I come up with. And this, this was the title. And then again, the whole campaign was more like two or three couple of questions at the start, starting the campaign on, on an interrogative note and then coming up to the services. So do you want to reskill and upskill to thrive in the IT sector? Join the IT Mustable Training Program Bash 2. What you will learn. Then we, in this slide, we share the forces. You can see each ad is like connecting the dot with the previous one. So this was a very logical, rational collection, connection I've developed throughout the campaign. Core courses, specialization, number of months of this program, number of seats, and eligibility criteria taught by the top-notch faculty. Interestingly, this program was not conventionally told by the university professors or teachers only. This was a combination of corporate practitioners plus the faculty members. So this was a unique combo that makes this program really engaging and insightful and meaningful for the participants. And finally, a call to action, don't wait, apply now. And the interesting part, the most interesting part, George, I want to share about this case study through this second part of the campaign was the human factor. I, I shared with you in the morning, I strike a balance between the human effort and what you call the leveraging of the technology. How? You see the images in this, on all the ads, the students? Yes. They, they all were basically shoot first before the campaign. And I actually visualize what will be the postures and styles of the students. You can see there are only one or two stock images. This was the real time human factor. And then the design factor, you can see the whole design again, manually done on Adobe, Adobe software. And about the tagline, about the effects, about the elements, I have ideas in my mind. I structure my ideas, my plan by frameworking my brainstorming part through my second brain that helped me to make this program more complete, more solid. Okay. So you really make the storyline from the beginning to the end that it is perfect for the client. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that works a lot. Couple of things that I cut the cost through a framework, frameworking and polishing my effort from two point, uh, more than 2 million to 0.7 million. I bring extra mind leads that not only meet this campaign lead, but also the, what you call the future lead for other cities. We, we were successful in terms of executing the campaign making it trade of the art in terms of the communication, the brand communication, the design strategy, the content strategy, the brand strategy. We were very effective in terms of what you call cutting the cost for more than 50% of the cost was cut down. We were able to manage in lesser number of resources while making 10 times more bigger impact for this campaign. And last but not the least, we create an impact in a way that this campaign can global reach and global impact and eventually help to uplift the employed branding image of systems limited. That was the ultimate objective. Wow. Adnan, and what about savings in time? Will you be faster with AI? Yeah, yeah, I find myself more productive. Like if I compare the whole campaign effort manually, that may took like two weeks to three weeks. But somehow I was able to manage in less than a week. And, wow. So and, that's very good for the clients. Yeah. yeah then the, they are much faster exactly, on the market. Exactly. Uh, the pre-phase was time taking, the planning phase. That I think there was there are certain things that will universally remain constant. And that is the planning phase. Dive deep part, the detailed part you are planning will remain same whatever the era will come. That's my opinion. I, somebody may disagree, but I believe. The more detail you are in terms of your planning phase, the easier you get in terms of your execution. So strategy, 
and planning are aligned you have to make it very concrete meaningful and in parallel moving so once you build momentum there execution becomes easy i think planning helps you to get clear and that's how you become faster in your work and again when you're using the second brain like gen ai that makes things more faster wow that's really impressive Adnan, I have a very tricky question for you. Should brands take a stand on social issues? That's a really interesting question. I think the question you ask is something serious and ethical equally because being a marketer or a branding professional or a socially responsible marketer, is it these two are different things. And when an organization, a brand or the community or team of marketing and branding professionals take anything as a social responsibility, as a social responsible initiative, social issues become imp important. Compliance for those issues become very important. So my take on your question is yes. And that is based on the stance that since people trust the brand, uh, people value the brands, people believe they always come up with something that add new to their lifestyle, new to their mood, making something meaningful and purpose-driven. So coming up with anything that educate them about that social issue become uh, what you call an added advantage in a way that you are giving a social responsibility role in terms of educating people not only about that issue, but how to cope up with that issue and how that brand can help you to cope up with that issue. Yes, there are the stakes of the company in terms of making more softer image of brand building through such highlighting such social issues. But equally, this has multiple advantage for the society at large. Since people trust the name of ABC brand, and when they say this, we need to, let's say, and it, it, they, they come up with a campaign that human trafficking or kids kidnapping is is something that's alarming issue you need to keep an eye around your surrounding what is happening you need to keep an eye where your child is going with your friend with his friends or circle parents have the responsibility to keep an eye what they're watching to whom with their connecting so things like that will eventually help not only the stakeholders to whom they're uh, conveying the message but equally helping brand to come up with an extra mile effort that they are not only the profit-making company, they have the other causes that benefit the society at large. So I think that's really meaningful when it comes to highlighting issues in terms of society. But again, it varies from brand to brand. It varies from company to company, how they take any social issue and how much transparently they present that issue that, again, subjective, what you call argument varies from company to company. But in a true meaning of socially responsible role, brands has a huge impact. I truly believe, likewise, when, when somebody is like a great name in terms of person branding, let's say Tony Robbins, a great name in, in terms of training, when he says something to the people about wellness, about the welfare of the people, yes, people ex uh, trust the word, people absorb the meaning of that sentence. Likewise, the commercial brands, the organization structures, when can they something in terms of social cause, I think that would definitely create a great impact. Yep. And it's also the social responsibility of the big brands, exactly. what they say, what they do. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. They have to do it. And Adnan, now we're coming to the most important question in this vlog. What is your vision? George, thank you for asking this question. This is something very few people actually ask me. Because asking somebody about his or her vision, or in fact, visualizing how that person is taking his journey to make, accomplish that vision, that really important for me and in fact, for any other person who values this thing. For me, my vision actually is covering three streams, but one main nucleus. One main nucleus is to transform my whole experiential learning in letter and spirit to the future generation. And first nucleus of that generation is my immediate family, and then to my immediate neighboring community, and then to the society at large. So that is my the vision to transfer my experiential learning 
in terms of branding, marketing, content strategy, person branding to the society at large in a truly socially responsible way that how it can actually benefit. So to accomplish this vision, I have like three missions and three missions actually for the first one is to make myself so much financially capable that I build a business empire for my in which there is one floor that is free for every that person who has the real knack and dedication to work but he or she don't have resources and in that business empire I want to build employment for people who actually want to work with me once I develop the financial freedom for myself, that is like at the esteemed level of my uh, vision, then I will be able, it's like the giving kindness factor of myself to spread whatever I have to the society. Imagine every person has to leave this world to experience death. So this is the responsibility of every individual to not only mind his own garden, but so new see in a way that you cultivate or bloom new plants that are developed by following your example and that start from your family and then you're setting example to the society at large to your friends kids of your friends the kids at uh, the young community around your society so uh, this is like the triple uh, not only the triple down effect the magnitude the magnet effect the uh, around the circumference of your work how you actually present yourself it's a very challenging part of my life but i believe in this journey i have peace of mind in every day every single day when i started my day and when i end my day when i see myself in front of me i have something to say myself yes i have done something very really meaningful every passing day is adding drops of productivity in my life and giving me a sense of accomplishment with every passing day that boosting my confidence. So when I say financial freedom, it's not like I don't have, I have issues in finance. No, I don't have financial issues. But what I'm looking for is like thousand times extra mile away where I'm looking for things that is fully facilitated, fully developed in terms of infrastructure, at least meeting the benchmarks of international standard so that when I execute my plan, that really reflect this international standards, something you are looking for, dreaming for. I have everything in my mind. I have everything in terms of my skill set, but all I need good team members, good facilities to execute them. And that's my eventually eventual. And the third part of my uh, own vision is again to build a one training center as well, where I train my, uh, my all the future generations where, who would like love to learn from me no matter it's the physical space it's even like the virtual space whoever want to learn i'm available if somebody can pay most welcome if somebody can't pay i have no issue i want that level of freedom i don't want to bound anybody to think like if you don't have laptop if you don't have amount to pay if you don't have facility of internet no problem come to me i will try to help you so that's my vision to make myself that much capable where I can help people in that way. That's my multiple goal. That's really very challenging, but it's a exactly. great journey and it's a very generous what you're giving to the society. Yeah, exactly. and that's, exactly. that's really great. I want to be a great businessman, but, a but a kind businessman. That's my venture purpose. The business world is very fat, hard, very ruthless. But yes, I have hope all the challenges. I built so many things uh, and I'm, I'm very... Uh, thankful to God Almighty that He gave, He has cap made me capable to deliver so many things. I have built a good mark for myself, but I feel now if I want to multiply everything for myself, I need to multiply for others first, and that's how I will build a right magnet of for myself and for the society at large. That's really great. Thanks, Adnan. Thank you. And uh, below you will find all the contact details, how to contact Adnan. That's really great. Your journey is really fantastic. You did a lot and I'm sure you will achieve also a lot in the future. And uh, yeah, we're working now together on AI projects. That's really fantastic. Uh, like and that. yeah, I hope you learned a lot, my guests. And I have to say thank you for watching and, and thanks to Adnan for the great insights you gave. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel.
and looking forward to see you soon again. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. The, all thanks to George for giving this wonderful platform. And, and I believe I'm looking for many such sessions with George. You're an amazing person. The full freedom to express myself. That's something really, really unique. If I talk about your learning platform, one unique selling, a unique selling point, you have one USP, that is your, what you call freedom level for the guests you're providing. That's really meaningful for me. And that's helped me to express in transparent way what I'm actually looking for in terms of business, in terms of helping the society as a socially responsible professional. Thank you, George. And uh, thank you to the community. And I'm looking forward to many sessions and many such avenues in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Atman. Thank you.